Good day, everyone. This so-called new normal changed the way we live in so many ways, especially in the field of education. Every day is a new chance and opportunity for educators to learn and think of more innovative ways to overcome these challenges through online transformation and innovative actions to equip people, especially educators and students, with different ICT tools to provide quality education even in this unique time. With the combined efforts of our guests and instructors from the College of Information and Communications Technology, Bulacan State University, we welcome you to Empowering Educators through ICT, a Bulso CICT webinar series. Sharing her thoughts and insights, we have the President of the Bulacan State University, Dr. Cecilia S. Navacero Gascon. Gandang hapon sa ating lahat to all the resource speakers in this webinar series. Ms. Lilibet Antonio, Mr. Aaron Paul De La Rosa, Ms. Uh, Gabriel Galang, Mr. John Limuel Salazar, Ms. Lorraine Tolentino, and Engineer Lester Phil Cruz. To the well-rounded and capable faculty members from the College of Information and Communication Technology. Of course, to our dear Dean of the CICT, Dr. Mags Latdula. To all the faculty members and staff of the CICT. And to all the participants of the four-day webinar, magandang magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Today, as the COVID-19 pandemic crisis continues to besiege the world, close to 1.6 billion children and youth were out of school. According to the UN chief, Antonio Guterres, the global pandemic has far-reaching consequences that may jeopardize the hard-won gain made in improving global education. To be able to address this global concern on education, last March 2020, UNESCO launched the COVID-19 Global Education Coalition. This is a multi-sector partnership between the UN family, the civil society organizations, media, and IT partners to design and deploy innovative solutions. Information and communication technology can complement, enrich, and transform education for the better. UNESCO, the lead UN organization for education, strongly believes the role such technology can play to accelerate progress towards the UN Sustainable Development Goal number, number four, which is quality education despite this pandemic. As an academic institution, we are at the forefront of ensuring that despite this challenging situation, education will never stop. The academic community is confronted by issues such as learning space, the decision between physical face-to-face -face classes to online or virtual classes. We need to ensure that in this new normal, our students are not cut off from the learning community. We must facilitate this transition from physical social interaction to virtual social interaction. Number two, inclusive learning. We are faced with a challenge that whatever is the intellectual capacities of our students, whatever economic condition they are right now, whether they are technically challenged or not, we will leave no one behind. Number three, ICT Zavi educators. This is the perfect opportunity for us educators to engage our students through this new normal in education. ICT Zavi means we are open to embrace change and we have a flexible attitude towards technology. This series of webinars is the perfect opportunity to learn new things, to embrace new things, and our first step in creating tech-savvy teachers. 
As UNESCO continues to work on its new version of ICT competency framework for teachers, which will cover new technologies and digital services now available to educators. Let us remain steadfast in empowering our teachers to be ready and adapt to the ICT-enabled education in the new normal. To my CICT family, the Bolso administration recognizes your effort to lead us in this new digital world of learning. We encourage you to continue to pursue endeavors such as this. You have my unrelenting support as we strive to produce graduates with an academic mindset that sees the relevance of this new way of learning to the real world and to their future success. To all the participants, may all the Google tools and services that will be discussed in this series of webinars enable us to help our students develop critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. However, always remember that aside from being a technically capable individual, we are teachers. And even in this physically distant mode of communication with our learners, there should always be a component of care, love, compassion, and understanding to everyone. Let us remain in touch, reachable, and always available to every student in our class. More than else our students need our guidance again accept my greetings of congratulations to the faculty members of the college of communication and information technology for this worthwhile endeavor maraming salamat sa inyong lahat god bless you all keep safe everyone To give us something to look forward to in these webinars, we have the Program Chair of BSIT Department of Bulso CIC and the overall Chair of the webinar series, Dr. Raquel Adria. Good afternoon to all of you, our dear educators, especially to our dear University President, Dr. Cecilia Nabasser Gascon. Information and Communication Technology plays a significant role in the education sector, especially in the process of integrating technology in the educational process. And with the pandemic we are facing now, the use of distance learning programs, applications, and platforms is recommended for the school and teachers to reach learners remotely. Truly, it is important that learning continues. In response to this new challenge, the College of Information and Communications Technology of Bulacan State University is conducting a series of webinars entitled Empowering Educators Through ICT, a Bulso CICT webinar series. It aims to equip people, especially educators and students, with different ICT tools that can be used to continually provide quality education through online learnings and assessment. This may also serve as a guide on how to set up an online virtual classroom where the educators can communicate and interact with their students. For the overview of the webinar series for Day 1 and Day 2, G-Suites for Educators. This webinar will discuss the G-Suite, which is an integrated suite of cloud computing, collaboration tools, productivity apps, and products powered by Google AI. In this webinar, we'll focus on using Google Meet, Classroom, Docs, Sheets, Slides, Mail, and Drive, which can be very useful for online learning in this unique time. Resource speakers are Ms. Lilibet Antonio and Mr. Aaron Paul de la Rosa. For Day 3, Engaging the Learners Through Interactive Quizzes. This webinar will cover different ICT tools in creating online quizzes and tests that can be used by educators and students for online learning assessment. Resource speakers are Mr. Gabriel Galang, Mr. John Limon Salazar, and Ms. Lorraine Tolentino. For Day 4, Setting Up Your Classroom, Classroom Netiquettes. This webinar will cover the basic know-hows of setting up a virtual classroom environment and also the do's and don'ts of 
implementation. The source speaker is Engineer Lester Phil Cruz. So all the attendees, thank you for your participation and support for this webinar. God bless us all. We would also like to thank this opportunity to acknowledge the people behind this event because without them, these webinars wouldn't be possible. The President of Bulacan State University, Cecilia Nabacero Gascon. The Bulacan State University Admins. The Dean of Bulso CICT, Dr. Maria Magdalena Gatdula. The College Secretary of Bulso CICT, Ms. Jane Christine Suarez. The overall chair of webinar series, Dr. Raquel Adriano. The co-chair, Engineer Lester Phil Cruz. The webinar committee members, Sir Aaron Paul De La Rosa. Ms. Lilibeth Antonio. Sir Gabriel Galang. Ms. Lorraine Calentino. Sir John Lemuel Salazar. The documentation committee, Ms. Priti Leigh Abdala. Dr. Jose Antonio Lee. Dr. Marian Minelli Cruz. We would also like to thank the Society for the Welfare of Information Technology Students under the supervision of Ms. Lourdes Chongson and Sir Marcus Marcos. The Corsair Publication. Few reminders before we start our webinar. To all attendees inside the Zoom meeting, kindly turn off your camera and microphones for a smooth flow of discussion. All webinars are recorded. E-certificates will be provided to attendees who registered and will accomplish the feedback form that will be provided at the end of each webinar. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring the bell button. Take a picture or screenshot of you during the webinar and use our official hashtag, hashtag empowered by ICT for a chance to be featured on our page. Now, to share her knowledge and expertise in Google Suite, may we welcome Ms. Lilibeth Antonio. Hello everyone and welcome to day one of the Bulacan State University College of Information and Communications Technology webinar series. And I'm here, I'll be your speaker for today and I'll be talking about G Suite for Educators. For those of you who are not familiar with G Suite for Education, syempre you will be asked, ano ba yung mga included natin under this G Suite? Actually, there are so many tools included in our G Suite for Education. These are, we have the Google Drive, the Google Classroom, we have the Mail, the Calendar, the Google Docs, the Google Sheet, the Google Slides, and the Google Form. Okay, so ano siya? It is actually a suite, a suite designed to empower educators and students as they learn and innovate together. G Suite for Education is actually cloud-based productivity suite which helps an individual and its teammates to connect and get the network done on any device from any location. Okay, but kailangan natin ng G Suite for Education? Actually, napakadaming reason kung bakit natin kailangan gumamit ng G Suite. Pero here is actually number one. Pa magugustuhan natin tong lahat. Number one, G Suite for Education is free. Yes, you read it right. Actually, entirely Free. Number two, your students already know how to use it. Sabihin, mostly mga millennials natin, mga Generation Z, they already know or inclined sa technology. They can easily comprehend the environment of the different tools for G Suite. And the last one, you can access the G Suite for education anywhere at any time. Kahit nakabakasyon ka, nasa bahay, but you can easily upload your photos, your files, anything use it using our G Suite for 
important reminders lang tayo bago tayo gumamit ng Institute for Education. Kailangan meron tayong Google personal account and of course, internet connectivity. Day one agenda natin for today is more on Google Forms, integrated or nakalink with Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides. Yung ating Google Classroom, Mail, and Drive will be discussed tomorrow on our day two ng ating webinar series. Okay. So ano ba yung Google Forms na tinatawag? At bakit ba siya importante in education, especially now na pandemic at lahat tayo ay naka-online learning? A Google Forms gives educators a powerful data collection tool. So meaning, it is a web-based app, free online tool ng ating Google, a uh, WYSIWYG. What is the meaning of WYSIWYG? It is what you see is what you get interface. Okay? So meaning, you can easily drag and drop the items or you can easily select elements on our Google Forms. And of course, all links ng ating Google Forms can be sent via email, website, or even on the social media networks. There are actually two purposes of the Google Forms. Number one, Google Forms collect data and gather input. Ito, yung mga mahihilig umatid ng mga webinars dyan, definitely nakikita natin pa lahat. Well, we try to register sa mga event registration, nagsasagot tayo ng mga surveys, and even course evaluation or instructor evaluation can be done using Google Form. And number two reason... So, let's try it. Right. Sorry, hindi pala siya nakashare. Alright, so number two natin is actually Google Forms can create quizzes, assignments, interactive. Yeah, and it's actually sample quiz that can be made using Google Forms. And this one. Kaya lang yung Google Forms natin wherein you can create quizzes will be discussed on the day three of our webinar series. So mostly ang ating focus for today's discussion is more on gathering and collecting data using Google Forms. Alright, so let's get started. Where do I find Google Forms? Actually, there are two ways para makuha natin si Google Form. Number one, you can actually open your browser and type forms .google.com or you can, kung meron na tayong personal Google Drive, you can also create one using your Google Drive. Kaya lang, reminder lang ha, to start using this tool, you need a Google account, the same one you need to access your Gmail, your YouTube, or your Google Drive. Right? So let's have an example. Right? So once you open your Google your browser, just simply type here forms.google.com. So this is the first way on how to open your Google Forms. And the other one, you can type it using your drive. And just simply create new. All right, so let's say la. Right, so I think two ways natin how to access Google Form. Number one, just like what I mentioned a while ago, all you have to do is to type forms.google.com and then maglilink na siya with your uh, forms. Kaya lang make sure nakalogin tayo, ah, just like this one. I'm already logged in using my Google account and this is my email address. And the another way is, is to type drive.google.com 
and then you have to create new and then Google Forms, right? So those are two ways of accessing your Google Form. Okay, wait. All right, so let's now start with our demonstration. Uh, basic lang muna tayo on how to create a simple Google Form using a blank template. Yan. So go to Google Forms. This is actually the environment of Google Form. Meron tayo ditong blank documents and these are the sample templates that you can choose from. So since this is just a basic demonstration tayo, basic to advance muna. So we will just simply create the blank form. Then wait lang tayo dito. You can see now the environment of our Google Form. So we, this is actually the title of the form. Kung may mga add-ons na kayo naka-install, magkakaroon tayo ng maliit na puzzle piece here na kalagay add-ons. It's actually the customized team, the preview, the setting, the send where you can find the links, and then more options here. Okay, just like what I mentioned kanina, dapat naka-login kayo with your personal Google account. Example natin today is we will try to create a very simple information sheet for our student. So, lagay lang natin dito with our heading example. We have student information. Okay, itong maganda kay Google, uh, kay Google Form, everything will be saved our Google Drive. Okay, so hindi na tayo kailangan mag-save dito lang mag-save kasi naka-online naman siya. So, when you are done with the heading, just simply click yung untitled form natin para magkaroon ng name sa ating Google Form. And just like this one. Okay, then you can put now your description kung tungkol saan yung inyong uh, information sheet for the students. Or for example, let's say, let's just simply welcome our student. Okay, welcome. Okay, so let's say, please fill up the information below. Right, so this is now our heading. Okay, this is what we call now, maglalagay tayo ng another elements. On this part, makikita natin yung different types of question na pwedeng pagpilian natin. So when you click the drop down menu, we have here the short answer. Right, this is, this is good for email addresses, for short names, etc. For paragraph, yung mga essay part natin. So we have here a multiple choice. Kung gusto natin magpa-quiz, then you can only select one particular item. So you can choose multiple choice. We have here the check boxes. If you can select multiple answer, we have the drop down. You can also upload file. We have a linear scale, the multiple choice grid, the check box grid, and if you like to include date, and if you like to include the time. Okay? So since we'll be asking for the student information, ano pa una nating tinatanong sa mga bata when we're asking for their info? Siyempre, we'll be going to ask their full name. Right? Si Google Form, automatic naman niyang maseselect what type of answer yung kailangan natin i-provide sa ating student. And then automatic naman siya nagkakaroon ng short answer. Alright? And then the next part will be, you can duplicate this kind of part or you can delete kung ayaw na natin. And you can even record to enter the, the his or her full name. And under these three dots, pwede rin tayong maglagay ng description. Okay? Para hindi sila naliligaw. Example, description natin is I would like to enter their last name muna. Last name muna, followed by first name, and then we have the middle initial. Para meron tayong pattern. Okay? Next one, we will try to add another type of question to add. Just simply click the plus sign here. Nakalagay naman dito, add question. So add. There you go. So what are the other things na gusto natin makuha dun sa ating student information? Let's say we can gather some email. Or look for the email address. Okay. And then tingnan natin na automatic siyang nakakaroon ng short answer here. Okay, pero yung, kung hindi naman siya mag-automatic, you can simply select short answer for that type of question. 
Okay, so since email ad siya, let's try to record. Basta nagkaroon tayo ng required item, automatic na magkakaroon tayo ng asterisk here. So ibig sabihin, the student cannot proceed to another question without answering first yung ating mga required fields. Okay, so for the email ad, you can also add description if you like or meron din tayong tinatawag dito na response validation. You can access yun dito sa ating tatlong uh, dots. For the response validation, okay, their instance kasi yung mga estudyante natin, napakatuloy nilang mag-input ng email address, di ba? So why not put some validation? Okay, for example, pag ang tinipe nila ay text na walang quest, uh, at sign, magkakaroon tayo dito ng message na dapat mag-enter sila ng valid email address. So let's just put it here, please. Input valid email address. Right? And then, click lang natin. And then later, makikita natin kung ano yung magiging uh, output nito. Okay, so what else would you like to ask to your information sheet? You can also ask the example gender. For the gender type, alam naman natin yung gender natin. Si, si Google Form medyo may pagka-intelligent siya ng konti kasi nakakaroon agad dito ng suggestion. Alam na sa sense na niya na kapag gender, ang gusto nating pagpiliin is either male, female, or prefer not to say. And then, nag-automatic na din siya with multiple choice type of question. When you click the add all, automatic na siya, walang kahirap-hirap. Kaya magandang gamitin si Google Form sa mga survey. Madali lang talaga siya. So, automatic na siya with the female, with the male, and then prefer not to say gender. And then, let's try to record para hindi sila makamove. Kailangan talagang sagutan nilang mabuti yung ating question. Okay. Let's say ito lang muna yung ating gagawin na student information. Three lang muna yung ating fields na gagamitin. The next step will be now. Diba? Napakadali lang. So we have the header here and then we have the different elements and different types of question. When you go up, napakadali lang ni Google Form. Just simply click here the themes. So, siya na rin yung bahalang mag-suggest ng mga team colors natin or even the team background. Pero if you like, you can also choose so many various teams na makikita natin dun sa ating Google Form. So, meron tayong work school, we have illustration, we have birthday, food dining, party, and etc. Okay? So, let's try for example, ating work and school. Select tayo ng best picture for our student information. Uh -huh. So, since first day ng school, para ma-inspire sila, ayan, lagyan natin ng mga different books. I'll just simply wait. Ayan. And then, once okay ka na with your teams, si Google Forms, automatic na rin siyang mamimili ng mga tint colors. Eh. Example, you like it brown, yellow, or you have this kind of color, or green, automatic na rin siya. Kaya walang problema. You can also select the background color if you like. We have here the medium, the dark, or even the gray part. Ayan. So, bahala na lang sa preference ni teacher. Pagigyan yung student po ano yung gusto nila. So, since we already have here our teams, click lang natin. And then afterwards, ayan, pwede na natin siyang ma-preview. Napakadali lang, di ba? So, click natin dito yung ating preview. And then we all na, meron na tayo automatic dito na student for. By the way, lahat yan ay nakasave sa ating Google Drive. Kaya wala na tayong magiging problema. Basta make sure lang na nakalagin tayo with your Google Drive. And then automatic na rin siyang nakasave doon. So this is the preview of our student information. As you can see, meron tayong mga required fields. Yun yung kami na in-input natin na required. We have here the last name, the first name, the middle. We have the email address and the gender. And then we have to click now the submit button. Right? So simple, right? So let's now try to answer. Okay. Last name, let's say Antonio Milibet G. Okay. Paano ko nag-enter lang ako ng B dito, then I'll proceed. I think sinasawag natin na response validation. Ibig sabihin, the B is not a valid email address, no? Kasi wala siyang sign. So, ma-aware si student natin na mali yung ini-import natin dito. So, with your, let's not try Antonio24 at gmail.com. So I have to choose my gender. 
And then all you have to do is just to click now, submit. Right? So submit another response. Na may maya na lang, later na lang kaya. So kung makikita natin, we, all, we have already one response with a summary. Ito siya. We have the full name. Okay. Ano pong maganda kay Google Form? Kasi kapag naka-multiple type tayo ng question, nagpo-provide rin siya ng graph that we can choose from. Okay, for example, makikita natin dito kung 50 female na ba yung nag-answer or 50 male yung nag-answer. So, madali lang yung seeking the graph. So, ito yung ating response. If you are satisfied now with your form, you can now send it to your students. Ang pag-send naman, simply click the send button. Okay, may makikita tayo dito na particular link. And then, let us try to shorten our link. And then, just simply copy-paste the link Copy, and then paste nyo kung saan nyo man siya gustong i-send. Pwede i-post sa Facebook, pwede i-send through email, or pwede i-text nyo sa inyong mga student kung saan sila mag-access ng form. Okay, for the meantime, wala mo na akong pag-send. So, I'll propose na lang muna natin siya. Okay, so ganun tayo mag-send. Right, so, let's try another one. Click the preview. Okay, so let's say... Okay, so Adit De Jesus A. Try muna tayo ng email address. Mayroon at gmail.com and then we have your mail and then submit. Okay. So when you click this one, automatic na rin si Google Form. So kung gani yung, kung sino yung real time na nag-submit or nag-create ng ating form, automatic na din si responses na makikita rito. Kaya siya maganda. Real time din. Mas makikita natin. So, makikita dito na we have two responses already. And then yung email address natin. And then the graph presentation of our gender. So, meaning 50 male and then we have 50 female. So, kung isi-send yan sa mga students nyo at there are 100 respondents, makikita natin siya under responses. Okay? Okay. So, ngayon, Paano natin mamamanage pa ng maganda si Google Form? Let us now to create our Google Sheet. Right? So kung may makita kayo dito ang kulay green na nakalagay dito na create spreadsheet, just simply click. So makakalagay dito create new spreadsheet. Ang ating file name will be student information. When you click create, Google Form will automatically lead you to the spread uh, to the Google Sheet. So ito rin yung maganda sa kanya. Diba? Well arranged na rin siya kung ano yung ating in-input. Everything will be reflected to our Google Sheet. So we have here the full name, we have the email address, and even the gender. Itong timestamp naman is automatic. Kasi since real time siya, makikita natin dito yung time, date kung kailan nag-fill nag up si student, and then the time kung kailan niya sinend yung ating form. Okay, so let's try to, to add another response. So click lang natin yung preview. Uh, let's say we have here mm -hmm, uh, Luxine Angel C. Sample email address is at gmail.com. And then we have your female. And then click submit. Okay, what's good with form? Automatic nang magre-refresh si ating Google Sheet. Wala na tayong po problemahin with our sheet data. Kasi once na may nag-input ng information, automatic na nating makikita with our sheet as part of our responses. Okay. Ngayon ang maganda rito, you can customize your sheet kapag tapos na siya. Okay. For example, uh, you can add. Par Kung marunong kayo with Excel, very similar lang din siya dito. Ang pinakaiba lang nila is online tong ginagawa natin. Pero you can personalize your own sheet. Okay. You can insert Ganun din sa Excel. So you can insert the row. Pwede kang maglagay dyan ng para information, a uh, student data sheet. Let's say student data sheet. Right? Ganun din. Pwede ka ding mag-merge. So let's say we have here format, merge cell, and then merge all. And then pwede ka din dito mag-center. You can also change the size. Right? And then you can center also the data fields. Or you can make it black. You can change the color of the cell. 
ng ating background cell dyan. Or you can even also change the color of our font. Okay. So, pwede natin siya talagang i-personalize. Maganda rito, kapag may na-input ulit si student na another response, automatic magre-reflect with our Google Sheets. So, let's say, uh, huh? Okay, mag mga hustler this G. Okay, example, we have here uh, bb at gmail.com and then the female, submit. When you view your sheet, automatic na din siyang magre-reflect dito. Hindi pa napakadali lang. You can even print it this one or pwede rin natin siyang i-share to our co collaborators para mas maganda siya. Kaya yung mga webinar usually na inaatanan natin, kaya Google Forms yung ginagamit nila. It's kasi madaling ma-organize yung ating data, especially using uh, Google Sheet. Very organized talaga siya in terms of collection of data. Okay, so that is the very simple example on how to use Google Sheet uh, using the blank or from scratch. Oh, by the way, under responses, meron din tayo ditong mga summary. So, so we have four responses. Kung meron kayong 50 students na pinag... Kung meron tayong 50 students na pinagdalhan nito, 50 students yung makikita natin with our responses and even our email address and gender rating pinaka cute na part eh. so makita natin talaga is sino na o ilang students na male yung nag nag input with sa ating Google Forms and ilang female yung nag input with other so, right so ito yung pinaka simpleng example ng ating Google Forms using the blank or using a uh, scratch muna tayo okay dali lang no so let's try to create now okay Okay, paano naman kung may templates tayo? So, since tapos na tayo using a blank or using a blank uh, template, a blank screen or templates, bakit naman mas maganda siguro kung may design na, di ba? Wala ka nang poproblemahin pa. So, why templates? Templates save time by not having to start from scratch. Yung kangina kasi from scratch tayo kasi it's a blank uh, form. Let's try to use the main templates. So, go to your Google. Ano muna natin siya, ha? So, to create another one, just simply create forms home. Yan. So, kangina, naka-blank tayo. May naman, let's try to use the templates gallery. So, eto naman siya. When you click this button, makikita natin lahat sa templates natin. So, we have here personal template, contact, find time, RSVP, party invite, we have t-shirt sign up, we have event registration, and work, ito, ito yung para sa atin for educators. Kasi pwede tayong mag-create dito ng event feedback, order form, job application, time of request, work request, or even customer feedback. And ito pala, education. Kaya lang hindi natin ito madidiscuss today, ha, creating quiz. Kasi we have a different uh, webinar series, day 3, ang i-discuss itong blank quiz natin. So, dito lang muna tayo with the personal and other templates na pwede for educators. Okay, so ano yung ating lalagay na templates dito? Uh, pili tayo ng templates natin. What's good with templates? It's ready-made na siya. Ang gagawin lang natin is mag-edit lang ng ating uh, some details na hindi kasala yung sa inyong uh, registration. Okay, for example, naka-ready-made na yung ating header. Meron na din siyang file name. Naka-ready na yung ating mga fields dyan. Gagawin lang natin is edit. Ito, nakaka-save to ng time. Hindi na tayo kasi babalik from scratch. Okay, example, for the event registration, instead of the word event registration, you can type here event ng school nyo. For example, IT Congress. Edit lang tayo ng edit, di ba? So, kailan siya i-event timing natin? Let's say, make it December 1, 2020. Okay, so event address, let's say uh, Bulsu Valencia Hall, and then you can contact us at, or let's say 
So ngayon, tanongin natin. Yung name, meron na, ready-made na siya. So wala na tayong gagawin dyan. It's already required. Depende na lang kung gusto nyong lagyan ng, ano yung sabi natin kanina, ng description. Para pare-pareho yung nasa Google Sheet natin. Okay, pwede tayong maglagay dito ng last name again. We have the first name. And then we have the middle initial. Okay. So email, naka-ready na siya organization. Dito sa BSU, especially in CACT, we have two organizations. So you can select, pwede nating edit siya into multiple choice. Okay. So what are the different uh, organizations? We have Sweet Style, and then we have now here the list. Right? So recording siya. What days will you attend? Let's say, di na natin siya babaguhin kasi three days yung ating seminar. Okay, kailangan pa ba natin to yung dietary restrictions? Hindi na, ano, no need. So kapag no need na, just simply click and then delete lang natin yung fields na ba? Delete. Okay, so mawawala na siya dun sa ating template. And I understand that I will pay, oops, naka-dollar pa siya. Ha? Just simply click lang. Let's edit the information. Let's say 500 pesos upon arrival. And then yes na din, required siya. Then we're done. Ganun kadali kapag template, everything is provided. All you have to do is just to edit lang yung mga hindi natin kailangan or need. And then when you click the preview button, so we're already done. Diba? Two minutes lang, tapos ka na with your forms because of the templates. So we have IT Congress here. We have name required. You ask for the email. You select the organization, the days, and of course kung makani yung ating babayaran. So for just a few minutes. So if we're done, just like what we mentioned, you can now send the link to your students. And then don't forget, shorten na lang natin para maikli lang yung copy natin. Then you can click the copy and then send it to the email address or post it to your Facebook or Instagram. So napakadali lang yung gawin. Okay? So if you try, kung gusto nyo makita ko ano yung output nito, you just simply click the preview and then you try. Magta-try kayong mag-input para alam natin kung ano yung itsura dun sa ating information. So, last name ulit. So, we have, let's say, Antonio Lilibet G. We have the email address. And then we have, the, let's say, sweets. And then, I'll, I a-attend ako lahat kasi mayaman ako. So, I understand that I will pay 500. Yes! Then click the submit button, right? Okay. And then, edit another response. Wag na lang. Right? Okay na tayo dun sa other response. And then, eto na agad siya. We have Lili Pet Antonio, my email address, and then I am a member of Suites. Then, I will attend all seminars. And then, yes, I will pay 500 pesos upon arrival. Okay? So, same process ulit tayo. Paano natin makikita yung ating Google Sheet? Ano yung pipindutin natin? So, we will click now the create. Yan. Create spreadsheet. And then, ano ulit? So, you will select this one, event registration, and then create. Then, the forms or the Google will automatically create you a particular event registration responses dun sa kanyang Google. Shit. So, ito yung kanyang itsura. Timestamp, time name, email, organization, the day of arrival, and then yung 500 pesos upon arrival. Ganun lang ulit. Napakadali lang, di ba? Using template, two minutes lang, tapos ka na. And then, send mo na agad with your members ng ating organization para madali silang ma-inform. So, kung gusto niyo pa ulit na another... Example, to simply create IT Congress. Tingnan natin kung magre-reflect siya with our ship. So, eto ulit siya. Mm -hmm. Let's say. Okay, this is ADG. Anong email niya? Let's say, at gmail.com. Uh, bliss naman natin. For example. And then, day one lang yung kanyang i-attend. Then, you have to click yes and then click submit. Go to your sheet. So, eto na agad siya. Automatic. Walang kahirap-hirap in an instant. Meron ka na agad na spreadsheet. Lahat ng nag-register dun sa event, you can easily monitor because of the uh, spreadsheet and our Google Forms. 
Dali lang, no? And then, pwede ka rin magtingin dito ng mga summary. Like, kung medyo visual, ito yung ating mas type, yung ating graphical or graphical presentation of the responses ng organization. And then, ito naman yung bar graph natin for the day kung kailan sila atin. And another graph. So, ganun lang kadali yung ating pagkikreate ng forms using templates. Okay? Okay, so let's have a review muna before we proceed. The number thing, yung number one na ginawa natin, we create from scratch or from blank. And then the other one is we create from templates. Okay na, siguro malino na natin siyang mga gigets. And then the next one, ati mga sa is how about kung gusto nating nakadivide into section or pages yung ating forms. Okay, napakadali lang yan using Google Forms. Okay, so let's give an example. So go to Google Mail again. Okay. So tanggalin na lang muna natin sila para hindi tayo malito. Okay, by the way, saan ba natin nakikita nga pala yung ating mga pinaggagawang forms? Lahat yan ay makikita sa ating Google Drive. So, eto siya. We have the student information and then we have the student form. Okay? So, huwag kayong mag-alala. Auto-save siya sa drive natin. Kaya hindi kayo maliligaw. So, go here. Okay? So, ano ulit yung ginawa natin kanina? From blank and from the template. So, medyo, medyo dagdagan na natin ng konti kasi nakapaggawa na tayo ng very simple form using the IT Congress registration and the other one is using the student sheet information. Okay, so let's now try to do some enhancement. Okay, if you click the blank form, ganun na lang. Wala naman tayong pinagkaiba kanina. Dadagdagan lang ng konti yung ating fields na lalagyan. So, this time, Let's have a uh, section or pages. Uh, let's say, alagyan lang natin ang pangalan palagi yung form natin. So we have students information. So click-click natin tong untitled form ah, para automatic na siyang mag ng name. And then all changes saved in Drive. Okay? So ano yung una natin gagawin dito? For the student information, let's siyempre tatanungin mo natin yung pangalan. Similar din siya. So let's have here the... Sorry. Ayan. Full name. Then short answer. Required ba? Yes, required natin. Okay. So ano naman yung pages or yung section na tinatawag? Example, marami kayong ihingin sa mga students nyo. Aside from the information niya, gusto nyo humingi ng guardian information. So, dun the time na pwede tayong gumamit ng tinatawag natin na section or yung pages na tinatawag. Ito lang siya sa baba. We have your add and then we have your the add section. Kung mapapansin nyo, we have section 1 of 2 for the student information and we have section 2 of 2 for the guardian information. Okay? So, ilang section na tayo? We have one section for the student and another section for the guardian information. Ngayon, kung mag-a-add ka ng field tungkol dun sa guardian niya, kiklik nyo lang si section 2 of 2. And then, you click the add question. So, automatic naman siyang maglalag. Anong kailangan natin hingin sa kanya? Okay, let's say, uh, full name ni guardian. Okay, so automatic naman siyang short answer. Okay, and then uh, let's say you can add another one. Or you can duplicate the field sa pwede rin ito. Pwede kang mag-add or pwede kang mag-duplicate. So duplicate natin. Anong gusto pa natin yun kay Guardian? Let's say kailangan natin ng contact number. Okay, and then wag na natin lagyan ng validation and then record siya. So, we already have two. We have section one of two and then section two of two. Okay, dagdagan pa natin. What if gusto mong hingin yung mga emergency contact? Hindi na siya for guardian or for student na. So, that's another section already. So, dito natin siya i-click again. Papansin natin, we have section three 
of three. Then, lagyan natin siya ng pangalan. Let's say, emergency contact person. Right. So, and then under this one, ano na yung mga fields na gusto mong tanungin under emergency contact person? Definitely, kailangan nating tanungin sino ba yung magiging contact person yung case of emergency. So, contact name, short siya. Add tayo ulit. Mm, let's say, contact number, short answer. And then we have, ano yung relationship niya dun sa ating student? So, relationship. Okay, then short answer. Right? Right? So, ganun yung ating section. Paano ba natin makikita sa section? Tingnan natin. Huwag mo na natin lagyan ng fields. Ano yung pinagkaiba niyo dun sa kaninang ginawa natin from template at saka from blank? When you click preview, pag gumamit kayo ng section, as you can see, magkakaroon na tayo agad rito ng next. Okay, so what does it mean? Ibig sabihin nun, nakadivide yung ating form. So, hindi lahat siya ay mapo-flood dun sa ating screen. When you click the full name, and then you click next, makikita natin dito, we have separate section for guardian information. Okay, mas organized na ng konti kapag hihingi tayo ng madaming information sa ating mga sudyante. So, for guardian, or let's say, okay, contact number ni guardian. There. And then you click next. Ano yung makikita natin? Emergency contact person. Right? Kasi three sections yung ginawa natin kanina. Okay. So, sino yung aking emergency? Let's say, magkaiba siya. Contact person niya ay 091900. There you go. And then relationship ko ay mother. And then you click now the submit button. Ayan. So, your sub response has been recorded. So, yun yung pinagkaiba ng section or paggamit ng section sa ating blank or template. And then, when you close this one, magkakaroon tayo ng response dito. Nakadivide rin into section. Example, ito yung for the student, ito yung for guardian, and then ito yung for emergency contact person. So, yun yung maganda using uh, pages or section. And then, ganun din siya. When you create the spreadsheet, then you will create one. Yan. So, makikita rin natin sila dito. Kaya lang kung mapapansin nyo ha, baka kayo malito. Kasi we have full name here and another full name here. Okay? Kasi si Google Form, I mean si Sheet, kung ano yung nakita niyang fields kay Google Form, automatic lang niya na nilalagay dito. Kaya makikita nyo ang daming full name dito. Ano? So, siguro to, para mas maging organized pa siya, Above. You can edit naman here. For example, this one is for the student form. This one is for the guardian. And the other one is for the emergency contact person. Kasi hindi naman malalaman din ni Google Form, di ba? So kung ano lang yung mga fields doon, yung mga section or pages, hindi niya nilalagay dito. Kung ano lang yung mga fields na nakalagay dun sa form natin, yun lang yung kukunin niya sa kanyang Google Sheet. Kaya kayo na lang yung bahalang mag-organize. Pero madali lang naman siyang mag-get sa atin. So, this one is for the student, for the guardian, and for the emergency contact person. Okay? So, gandahan pa natin si ating Google. Ano ulit yung gagawin natin para mas ma-enhance pa siya? Then, simply click the customize template. Then choose, let's say colors, insert, yan. So, pwede na natin siyang mas okay na siya. Okay, paano ulit siya? Pag niran natin, pinagkaiba niya with the blank or with the template na kanina, yung dire-diretsyo, ito ay nakadivide into pages. So, ito ay another option kung gusto natin mas maging organized yung ating forms. Okay? Kaya lang, hindi ka magpo-proceed kasi naka-required tayo. So, mag-sample na lang tayo dito ng para makita ulit natin. Next. Okay? Organize into guardian. Next. Hindi tayo makaka-next kasi naka-required tayo dito. Sample na lang ulit. Then we have here contact first. Contact number. 
example lang, next, right? So we have your full name, full name. Mm. Next mo naman. Then we have here our contact, per, contact number rather. Our relationship ko is, let's say, mother. Then click submit. Na wala pala si ating... So, we have two responses already. We have for the summary. We have for the... Ito yung other page natin for the guardian information. Another page for the emergency contact person. And graph, which is good. Nakalagay lang naman dito lahat mother yung relationship dun sa guardian. Okay? And if you like to create spreadsheet, just simply create the spreadsheet here for the response okay so that is an example of google forms with pages or section napakadali lang diba okay paulit-ulit naman natin gagawin you can memorize everything okay right so siguro na gets na natin siya next one how about the other feature of our google form again you can link or branch yung ating forms into uh, several sections. Okay, ito, madali lang din siyang gawin. Okay, ulit. So, okay na tayo dito sa pages, no? Mamaya magagawin ulit natin to kaya make sure na magiging okay siya. Great again with our Google Form. Napakadali lang naman, user-friendly. Would you like it to create as blank again? Yan. So, ganun lang po. Ulit-ulit lang tayo. Naku, mas madali nyo itong mag-gets kapag pa ulit-ulit tayo. Okay. Uh, let's say we have here a digital device survey. Okay. So, ano ulit para magkaroon ng name? Kiklik lang yung untitled form and then it will automatically be included here. Okay. All changes save in our drive. Uh, wag mag-alala. Lahat nasa drive yan. Uh, hindi siya mawawala for as long as you have your Google Drive, okay? O baka sabihin nyo, klinoso, tapos biglang nawala. Ano? Hindi, nasa drive lang naman siya lahat. Naka-save. Okay? Huwag kayong magpapanik. Okay? So, let's have here. Uh, for example, magkakaroon tayo ng digital device uh, survey. Simplehan lang natin for our example. Mang question na maganda dito. Mm -hmm. So, let's say, ask mo na yung aka nilang full name ng sudyante. So, short answer. Paano to? mag add na question. Uh, let's say contact number of our student. Short answer. And then another one. We have the what device are you going to use for our online class? Okay. So ang Logic natin dito is pamimili natin sa estudyante natin na kung anong klaseng device yung gagamitin nila in conducting our online class. So definitely it's multiple choice. Ano bang gagamitin ni student pag nag-online class na tayo? Is it mobile phone? Tells. Or is it mayaman may desktop sa bahay? So desktop computer? Or mas mayaman kasi naka-laptop na i7 or laptop? And then, lagyan natin dito ng others. Right? Ayan. So, ngayon, i-apply natin dito yung natutunan natin kanina na add section. Kasi ang logic ng branching or linking, pag namili si estudyante natin na ang gagamitin niya ay mobile phone, pupunta siya to another page. Okay? Then, mag answer siya ng separate question. So, ang gagawin natin dito, Agaya kanina, mag a tayo ng pages or ng section. Makikita natin siya ulit dito sa baba. Okay? Yung ating horizontal choices. So, click lang natin dito yung ating page section. Pangalanan natin siya as say mobile phone. Okay? O next, add tayo ng another section. Anong name yung pangalan? Yes, tama. You have to write here desktop computer. Sige, mamaya makikita nyo kung paano siya. And then we have another choice laptop. Add tayo ng another one. Ano yung pangalan niya? 
we have here the laptop. Yung sa other, wag na lang kasi magta-type lang din naman sila doon. Okay. Okay na? O, di ginawa natin. We type the header, digital device survey. We included two fields na short answer, full name and contact number. And then a simple question or survey lang. What device are you going to use for our online class? And then ano yung next step? Nag-create tayo ng how many sections? One, two, three sections. For one, for mobile phone. Ito siya. And then one for the desktop computer. Choices, desktop computer. And one for the laptop. And then we have here the laptop. Okay? So ngayon, ang question sa inyo, kapag ang sinelect ni student ay mobile phone, ano pa yung gusto niyong itanong regarding mobile phone? So dito yan sa ating mobile phone section. Click the mobile phone and then simply add. Okay. So anong maganda nating itanong sa mobile phone natin? Uh, operating system? Kung naka-iOS ba siya or naka-Android? So iOS or Android. Then, record natin para ma-record siya ng pumili. That is other mobile phone. The other one, let's add another one. Kung gusto yung tanong regarding mobile phone, pwede nating tanungan kung ano yung kanilang network provider. Okay? So, si Globe ba or si Smart? Dalawa na lang muna. And then, make it record. Okay? Network provider. So, that is for the mobile phone. Next, paano naman kung isa-select ng bata desktop computer? O ano yung gusto niyong question regarding desktop computer? So, punta tayo dun sa section na ginawa natin kanina, desktop computer. And then, pag ang sinelect ng student ay desktop computer, I'll be asked one. Hmm, ano ba yung PC brand niya? Baka naka ano to, Mac. So, brand natin. Tatanungin na lang natin. So, short na lang siya. Short answer. Magta-type lang naman siya kung Lenovo, HP, or etc. Then, what operating system? Let's ask. Operating system. Okay. Short answer na lang din siya. And then make it record. Lahat record. Yun. Okay? O, next tayo. So, we're done with the desktop computer. Ano pang next natin dito sa ating choices? Laptop. Ano ba yung gusto yung itanong sa student nyo kapag laptop yung kanilang choices? So, let's go to the laptop section. Ayan. So, ano ulit na, let's say, brand of your laptop. Then, short answer na lang. And then, what else? Operating system, perhaps. Pwede yung itanong anong OS na gamit. And then, short answer. Okay na? Alright. So, let's review. Tingnan natin kung nag-gets natin. So, ang ginawa natin dito is we created a digital device survey. mag ask ng student's name, contact number, and then ito yung pinaka-survey natin. What device are you going to use for our online class? Example. Ayan. So, ito yung pinaka-survey natin. Ha? Yung mobile phone, we have desktop, and then we have the laptop, and we have the other. Okay? Ano yung logic ng ating branching? Pag clinic yan yung mobile phone, saan siya pupunta? Sa section 2 of 4, mobile phone. Pag clinic ni student yung desktop computer, saan siya pupunta? We have desktop computer 3 or 4. And then kapag laptop, then pupunta siya dun sa laptop. Okay? Right? Kaya lang ito lang yung huwag natin kakalimutan ha? kapag gagawa kayo ng branching or nung link ng ating forms. So huwag nyo itong kakalimutan or else magdidire-direcho si student. Ang gagawin natin dito is after section 1, continue to next section. And then pag nag-select na siya, nagpunta na siya sa mobile phone, kailangan dito magsasubmit na siya ng form. Okay? Bakit? Kasi one, one lang yung pwede niyong piliin, di ba? Remember yung kanina, yung sa multiple choice, the student can only answer one. So pag ang clinic niya dito is mobile phone, mobile phone, and then dapat dito submit na doon siya. Right? Okay. Similar din dun sa ating section 3 of 3. Desktop computer, continue, and then submit form. Okay? 
And then yung laptop wala na kasi siya na yung pinaka-last. Right. Tingnan natin ngayon kung ano yung output of our presentation. Siyempre, kailangan muna natin yung teams. Abang teams natin? Ito na lang first one for the sample teams. And there you go. Yan. Let's see kung ano itsura pag gumamit kayo ng linking or branching na tinatawag. So we have digital survey. Okay, let's say Didipet Antonio. Contact natin. Yan. Okay, tingnan natin to. Ah. Hindi pa may papakita si pages kasi the student need to select muna kung anong device yung kanyang gagamitin. Is it mobile phone, desktop, laptop, or others? So tingnan natin tong mobile phone. When you click mobile phone, you have to click next. Kung mapapansin nyo, mobile phone lang yung lilitaw with other forms. Okay? Kung mapapansin natin, mobile phone lang yung lilitaw with our uh, form. Kasi mobile phone lang yung kanyang select. And then, eto yung ating uh, selection. Mobile phone ko ay iOS. And then, globe ko ay smart. Then, click sa globe. Okay. Ngayon, nasan si laptop? Kangina. At saka si desktop PC, wala yon kasi hindi naman niya sinelect. Eh. Kaya yun yung maganda kapag ikaw ay magpa-branch. Okay, example, let's try to submit another response. Yan, alright. Okay, what if si desktop computer yung aking sinelect? O ano yung tingin yung lilitaw pag nag-click ako ng next? Yes! Ay, dapat si desktop ko si ano pala yung aking napili. Ah, si mobile phone. Alright, so let's take a look. We forgot something here. Ito pala yung nakalimutan natin, guys. Don't forget this one. Under dito. Okay, nakalimutan natin lagyan ng link. Kaya yung kanina, napunta tayo kay mobile phone. Nagdire-diretso siya. Para maglagay tayo ng link dito or branch. Ayan, ito pala. Go to section based on answer. Kamali okay, ah. Ito. Ngayon, pag si mobile phone, saan siyang pupuntang form? Ang galing. Saan? Yan. Tama. Sa so, go to section 2, mobile phone. For the desktop computer, go to section 3, desktop computer. For the laptop, go to laptop. And then yung others, huwag na lang natin lagyan ng option. Right. So parang magsasubmit na lang siya. Right. So let's see. Review. Tingnan ulit natin kung magiging okay na siya. Contact number. Yan. Okay. So, desktop computer. Dapat pupunta siya kay desktop computer or else mali yung ginawa nating link, link kanina. So, when you click desktop computer, click next. Yun. So, nagpunta na siya kay desktop computer. It's because so, nakalimutan natin lagyan ng link kanina. So, desktop computer, now pwede na siyang mag-type dito ng kanyang information. Let's say Windows. And then click Submit. Okay? When you click another response, let's try kung mag-link mag siya. Uh, let's say 0919 and 5678910 Sample lang. Okay. Pag ko si laptop, dapat pupunta ako kay laptop or else magkakaroon tayo ng error. Let's see. Laptop. Next. Yun. So, laptop siya. So, yun yung, pinaka, yun yung tinatawag natin na branching. So, select ng option and then pupunta to another page. Let's say H. Kaya uh, natin dito. Apple. Para maiba naman yung we have here in the Macintosh. Then, submit. So, ganun lang pagkagawa ng pages with simple branching or link. So, let's have review. Paano ulit natin siya ginawa? We do the header here. Nag-add tayo ng two fields for the full name and then the contact number and then yung ating survey. Okay? Pag naglagay tayo ng option dito, example, mobile phone, ano yung gagawin natin? Gagawa tayo ng section for mobile phone. So, mobile phone, magkikreate ka ng section for mobile phone. 
Okay, that is two of four. Pag naglagi ka na another option for desktop computer, anong gagawin natin? We have to add another section for desktop computer. And so on and so forth. Then afterwards, ano yung huwag natin kakalimutan? You go to the survey itself, and then click the three dots, and then look for go to section based on answer. Pag naklik na natin siya, dilitaw tayo, dilitaw siya dito, and then you can select na kung saan section siya mapupunta. Tapos si mobile phone, pupunta kay mobile phone, the desktop computer, pupunta kay desktop, and then we have the laptop, pupunta kay laptop. Okay, that's it. Napakadali lang. So that is what we call the branch or the link. Okay? So ganun lang din. Once na natapos na tayo, na isend na natin yung link natin. Okay? Nasend na natin yung link. Send you sa email or sa Facebook. Automatic na yung mag-create ng ating spreadsheet. And then mag yung mga respondents nyo, uh, respondents, lahat sila magpupunta na with your form. Ito siya. Uy, yung galing pala. So, sakto pala. So, one. Makikita natin ito with our graph. And then, ito yung mobile phone. 100% iOS. Network provided. Globe. Kasi hindi pa naman kompleto yung ating mga respondents. And then, kung gusto nyo ulit magkaroon ng uh, spreadsheet copy of this one, ganun ulit. So, just simply select the create spreadsheet. And then, click create. Ayan. So, automatic na din siyang magkakaroon ng ating uh, digital service device survey responses. And then you can now share it or you can edit it if you like using the Google Sheet. Okay, dali lang, no? Okay. Anyway, recorded naman lahat to. So, pwede ulit natin siyang ma-visit sa, sa channel ng Bulso CICT kung medyo matuloy niyo ating demonstration. Kasi we have to tackle mostly yung lahat ng content ng ating Google Forms. Okay? So, as uh, before we proceed with uh, another feature ng Google Form, so, ito ulit yung ginawa natin. We start from blank. We create, we selected templates and input more data. At yung mga sample templates natin. Ano yung ginawa natin kanina? Nag-create tayo ng section and pages. And then the last one, nagkaroon tayo ng branching logic or yung linking of the selection to a particular page. Okay? Next one. How about this one? Ito masyado tong gamitin, especially yung mga nagtitisis na students or yung mga nag-aaral na mga educators. Kung gusto nyo magpa-evaluate ng forms or magpa-evaluate ng inyong mga teachers, napakagamitin nitong multiple choice grid. So that is another field or type of question na pwede natin gamitin with the Google Forms. Okay, so paano gawin siya? Napakadali lang. Okay, so let's create another new new form. Paulit-ulit lang naman ito. Memorize nyo din yan. Basta lagi lang natin siyang gagamitin. Okay, so let's say we have create blank. Okay, gusto ko magpa-evaluate ng instructor. Eh. So lagyan natin dito ng instructor evaluation sheet. Yan. So send natin to sa mga student natin then let them evaluate their teacher. Kaya lagyan natin dito. Ang i-evaluate nila, let's say, instructor, instructor to be evaluated. Or let's say, si Miss Adina. Yes. Sample lang naman tayo. Then we have here Subject niya ay computer fundamentals. And then department ni ma'am ay, uh, let's say, BSIT department. Okay. O, lagyan natin ang pangalan yung form natin, ha? Ito ang pangalan ng form. So, click nyo lang dito and then click. Yan, automatic na siyang magkakaroon ng uh, name. So, since gagawa tayo ng evaluation. Lagyan natin ng full name ni student pero optional lang to kasi merong mga sudyante na ayaw magpabanggit ng pangalan. So, lagyan lang natin dito as optional. And then, kapag optional siya, definitely walang required dito. Okay? Kasi pwedeng leave blank yung pangalan ni student. Okay, next. So, paano mag-add ng another field? Just simply click the add question. 
Ayan. So, eto ulit tayo. Okay, this time, ang gagawin natin is tatanungin natin siya lalo. Say, please evaluate your instructor. Okay. Ayan, ang galing ni, ni form, di ba? Na sense na agad niya, yung word na evaluate, ang gagamitin ko ay multiple choice grid. Ayan. So, ganun siya. Kaya, kaya mag-ala, napaka-user-friendly ni Google Form. So, di na ako mamimili, pero kung just in case na hindi siya mag-automatic na selection, pwede niyo siyang i-click dito as multiple choice grid. Okay? Okay, what is yung rows na to? Rows is the horizontal. Okay? Yung column naman natin is yung vertical. Usually, rows dito compose yung ating uh, question o yung mga evaluation question. For example, the instructor is pre prepared in class. Okay? Mga three lang siguro, no? For the sake of demonstration. Sorry. The instructor uh, arrives on time. The instructor yan, sample lang ang leaves on time. Okay. Ano yung column? This is actually the yung ating mga choices na dito. Kunwari, you are strongly agree, agree. Ayan. Kaya yung mga nagtitesis, definitely alam na alam na natin pa lahat. Kung ano yung magiging answer nila. So, strongly Agree? Yeah, tapalang. Agree? May disagree ba? Lagyan natin na uncertain. Uncertain. Then we have the disagree. And then we have the strongly disagree. Okay? So, yeah. Then make it the query. So, ginawa natin, we put the header, we put the name of the instructor to be evaluated. The full name to nung ating student na mag -e evaluate And then, ito yung mga criteria for the evaluation. Kung gano'n nyo siyang makita agad, lagyan ulit natin ang team, syempre, para maganda palagi yung ating... Maganda palagi yung ating form. Yan. Okay, so when you click now the preview, yan, napakadali na ngayong mag-evaluate kasi si Google Form, naka-arrange na rin siya. Diba? For example, nandiri tayo yung ating criteria, and then nandiri tayo yung kanilang basis ng pag-grade. Evaluate your instructor. The instructor is prepared in class. Oh, strongly agree ako dyan. Okay, the instructor arrives on time. Strongly agree. The instructor leaves on time. Strongly agree. And then if you're done, you can submit na the form. Uh, di ba? Napakadali lang magkaroon ng evaluation. So, pwedeng gamitin to sa mga thesis ng studyante. O yan, mag -e evaluate ng mga system or evaluate ng mismong event. Pwede rin siyang gamitin using the multiple read. Let's submit another one. Sample. Uh, maglalagay na ako ng pangalan kasi malakas na yung loob ko. Kasi tata. Pero lalagay ko dito ay disagree. Strongly disagree. And then this then you click the submit button. Yan. Okay. Meron two responses. And this will be now the summary. Yung maganda kay form, since uh, naka-multiple grid tayo, nagpo-produce siya automatic ng graph. So, ito makikita natin siya. So, I, since dalawa lang naman yung... Hindi makikita ito kasi hindi siya naglagay. No? Pero it's counted kasi nakadalawa tayo dito. So, one strongly agree, the other one is disagree in terms of the instructors prepared in class. Then, so, the instructor arrives on time, one strongly agree and one disagree. So, madali nating makikita through wraps. Yan. So, ganun lang paggawa. Napakadali lang. So, kung gusto niyo naman ng mga multiple checkbox, marami silang choices, then you can create the checkbox here. Or kung gusto niyo lagyan ng date, Kung kailan sila nag-evaluate, wala ding problema. Example, yan, tapos na siya. Then you want to put another option. Try natin yung sa date. Ang date naman is so simple, just simply create the date. Date. Automatic na rin siya si Google Form. Nakalagay na dito yung simple calendar. 
pag niran niyo yan, let's say, let's try to preview. Si date naman ay nakakalendar niya agad. Wala ka nang poproblemahin doon. Just drag and drop. When you click the date, yan, say date today, automatic na din siya. Kaya napakadali lang ng paglalagay ng date and time using the Google form. And then you try to evaluate. Yan. Since andito na tayo, sagutan na natin. Then click the submit button. Okay, so that's it. So if you want to see the spreadsheet, go to the responses and then create another spreadsheet. And then similar lang din kanina, when you create one, anong mangyayari? The Google will create a spreadsheet for you na nakasave na on your Google Drive. Right. So since optional yung ginamit natin kanina, isa lang yung malakas ang loob na naglagay ng pangalan. Okay? And then ito yung evaluation niya. When you click, ito makikita natin dito. The disrepaired in class. One, isa yung nag-strongly agree, isang disagree, isang agree. Then the other one, arrives on time. And then we have here the leaves on time. So ganun lang siya kadalo. Okay? So since kailangan nating matakal iba pang part, hopefully nakaka-get along pa tayo. Okay, eto na. Punta na tayo sa medyo advanced ng konti. So, we have limited time na lang using the add-ons. Pero, hopefully you learn something about creating forms using blank, using template, using section and pages, using branching and logging, logic, branching logic rather, and using multiple choice grid. Okay na. Since okay na tayo sa basic, let's now proceed with the advance lang ng konti using the add-ons. Yan. Ako, paano ba gumamit? May tatawag natin na add-ons. Hindi tayo familiar, no? Pero you can still enhance or uh, see more features of our Google Forms using add-ons. Okay. Add-ons is actually established or developed by the third-party system. O, hindi si Google yan. Usually, mga third-party developer yung gumagawa ng add-ons. Then, naka-integrate lang dun sa ating Google form or Google Sheet, Google Slide, or Google Docs. Okay? Alam nyo, ito yung pinaka-popular na add-ons na pwede natin gamitin, especially as educators, yung tinatawag natin na AutoCAD add-ons. It is a flexible, easy-to-use document merge tool that creates PDF or shared documents from spreadsheet data. Okay? Ano ba yung gusto natin? Lagi tayong nag-a-attend ng mga webinars, right? Actually, yung iba nga gusto mo, laging may mga e-certificates. Paano ba ginagawa yung mga e-certificates na yan kapag mga 20,000 yung participants natin? Kung pa kayo nagtataka, kapag nag-register ka, automatic, the, yung, naka, yung sponsor ng event, automatic magsasend ng mga e-certificates. Ayan, it's actually, gumagamit sila, or some of them actually use the add-ons autocrat. Let's see, paano ba ginagamit si autocrat sa ating Google Form? Step 1, definitely gagawa muna tayo ng ating survey. Example, magkikreate tayo ng event. And then yung event na yun, magpo-produce ng certificate. Okay. From blank na lang ulit. Ah. Okay. So from blank. Ano ba? Let's say, bibigyan ko kayo ng, web, ng certificate after our uh, webinar series. So web ops, click natin tong ating untitled form. We have here the webinar series. The title natin is uh, Bulsu CICT. We have here webinar series. Our date is from June. 15 hanggang June 19. 2020. Ano pa yung karaniwang hinihingi ng mga nag-sponsor ng events kapag kayo ay nag-fill up ng mga forms or webinars? Definitely your full name. Okay? So take note guys ha, kapag gagawa kayo ng full name, then ililink natin sa certificate, dito nagkakaroon ng major problem. Lalagyan natin siya palagi ng description. Lagyan mo dito na this name or this will appear 
on the certificate. Okay. Yung iba, mag, magre-reklamo yan kasi mali yung pangalan sa certificate. Eh. Kasi hindi nila alam na kung ano yung in-input mo dito with your full name, yun yung mag appear sa ating e-certificate. Kaya make sure we have to put a small description here. That this will appear on e-certificate. Right? So, full name lang. Siguro mga two choices na lang para matulong tayo. Then, short answer, then required. Okay? Add another one. Madurong kita yung mag-add. Click lang natin. So, ask for the email address. Ayan. Ito, inaabangan nyo to kasi isi-send ng nag-sponsor yung inyong mga certificate sa email address. Short answer lang siya. Okay? Make it required. Full name, make it required. Okay? Check. So, email address, make it required also. Then, last one will be the institution. Short answer lang siya, and then make it required. Okay? So, ginawa natin, we put the heading, we put three uh, fields, the full name, short answer, email address, short answer, institution, short answer. Let's Choose natin yung teams natin. Ano bang teams yung medyo okay? Uh -huh. ah, ito na lang. Sample na sa kalangitan. Then choose the color that you like. Okay, so ito yung ginagawa ng mga nag ng seminar. Gagawin lang nila is to create a simple survey or information like this. Isa-send, kukunin yung links. Ito na yung nakikita yung links sa ating Facebook or sa ating email address. Okay? Tandaan natin na we have full name, email address, and the institution. Okay, next step. Go to your drive. Kailangan nakalagin ka. Gagawin lang natin is lahat ng certificate natin nakalagay siya into one folder. So, click lang tayo ng new folder. Pangalan na natin siya as certificates. And then, create Okay, hanapin natin. Ito, 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 certificates. Yan. Okay. Make sure naka-open si certificate. Okay ba yun, guys? Gagawa lang tayo, ha, para naka-ipon certificate into one folder. Okay, let's see. Okay. The next step natin is we will now create our certificate. Punta na lang tayo sa drive. Saan kayo mas feel gumawa ng certificate? Example, you can create new. Yan. So, slides tayo. Then, blank presentation. Google Slide naman is very similar with PowerPoint. So, naglo-load yan. Kaya napakadaling gamitin din yung slide. Ang pinaka-difference lang naman naka-online tayo. And it's automatic na nasa-save sa our drive. So, gagawa tayo ng certificate. Click. Wala lang templates na lang tayo. Pero kung meron na kayong ready-made certificate, huwag na kayong gumawa nito. Ah, kasi wala pa ako naka-ready-made certificate dito. So, certificate of participation. Participation. Okay, alright, sabi ko pag ready-made na, huwag na pong gumawa nito. Pero kung wala pa, napakadali lang gumawa ng certificate using our Google Drive. Right? Certificate of participation is given to... Okay, so let's now put some text. Ito na yung pinaka... Okay. So this time, since we'll be integrating form to our certificate na nasa slide, gagamit na tayo dito ng another feature of our uh, add-on. So don't forget this one, ha. At the end ito, we have the two greater than, less than symbol. And then take note of this. Ginawa natin. Full name. Okay, ma'am. May explain natin kung bakit siya pa tayo naglagay dyan ng full name. And then, siguro, lakihan lang natin ng konti si full name. Put it in the center and then make it bold. 
Wait, bakit si full name yung nilagay natin dito? Actually, this is a tag na tinatawag natin. Okay? Ang gagawin natin dito sa full name, whatever yung respondent, o ano man yung pangalan na nilagay niya sa full name, siya yung mag a with our certificate. Okay? As is siya. Kung ang nilagay niyo dito ay capital F, kailangan yung tag mo dito capital F din siya. O meaning, as is, kung ano yung nandito na i-input ni respondents na gusto niyang mag-appear sa kanyang certificate, ito din yung ilalagay natin sa ating tags or certificate. Okay? Don't forget that, ha? Okay, example, naglagay ka dito, tinanggalan mo siya ng walang space. So, anong lalagay natin dito, guys? Wala din space, ha? As is talaga yung ating gagawa. Okay? Oh, let's add another para makumpleto na tayo. Sample for actively participating in Bulso CIC Bulso CIC Simplehan na lang natin o webinar series. Okay, so laki siya natin siya. Okay. Gumagawa ako nito kasi wala akong ready-made na certificate. Just like what I mentioned, kung meron na kayong ready-made certificate na nasa drive nyo, pwede na lang natin siyang bunin or i-edit. Pero dito ay wala pa po akong ready-made certificate. Yan. So, i-center lang natin siya sa akin. Alright, siguro pwede na ito. Napakasimple lang. Okay, okay na tayo doon. Okay, ano unang step muna na ginawa natin? We try to put, nagawa muna tayo ng form. Okay, next. Gumawa tayo ng folder sa ating Google Drive kung saan magsa-save si certificate. Next step, gumawa tayo ng ating certificate. Okay? Okay na tayo doon. Next. Isa-send nyo na ngayon yung link, di ba? So all you have to do now is to send the link to our respondent. Then shorten copy paste po sa Google ay po sa email or po sa Facebook walang problema but in this example wala tayong pagsasenda nito review and let's try to okay yung pangalan take note uh, this will appear on e certificate so ang gusto kong mag-appear doon ay nakakaps lock so Lilibet G Antonio Kailangan dito valid na yung email address natin kasi magse-send si autocrat ng email ad ng I mean, ng certificate sa inyong email address. Google.com, let's say, Bulacan State University. Then, submit. Right, so done. We have one response. Hmm, ayan, ako lang. Ito din naman yung kanina. Anong next natin? We will create now the spreadsheet. Yan, so mag-open na siya. Okay, ngayon, paano malalagyan ng pangalan ng respondent yung ating certificate? Then, ngayon papasok si add-ons. Ang add-ons natin kami na ay si Autocrat. Kung wala ka pang Autocrat na add-ons dun sa ating spreadsheet, pwede kang mag-get add-ons. Okay, search lang natin kung ano yung add-ons na gusto natin. Let's say si Autocrat. Nakalagi naman dito, installed na. Kung hindi pa, i-install lang natin. Okay, so since meron na ako ditong add-ons na naka-install, click lang natin si Autocrat and then click Launch. Okay, so wait lang tayo ng konti. So lilitaw na si Autocrat natin. Yan, so create new job. Ito user-friendly din siya kasi click ka lang naman ng click. Okay, anong gusto nating certificate uh, name? Uh, let's say certificate para mas madali nating mag certificate. Click next. Dami ko nang nagamit. Right, so since gumawa tayo ng certificate natin, alagay dito choose template. Gumawa tayo kanina, eto, untitled pa rin pala siya. So lagyan natin ang pangalan ko. Yan, certificate of participation. webinar. Okay, so ito siya. 
cancel muna natin na kasi hindi siya nabit. So, from drive. Ito. So, kiklik lang natin si certificate. but nandyan siya agad? Di ba? Sinaka-save nga siya sa drive natin kamina. And then, just simply select. Okay. So, eto na siya. Click next. Okay. Eto yung sinasabi natin kanina ng mga tags. Okay. Take note ha. Bakit nandyan si full name? Actually, si full name, iyan yung nilagay natin na tag do atin sa ating certificate. Na... Nandun naman sa ating survey na full name. Okay? Dahil na sa sense na ni Autocrat na naglagay tayo, automatic na siyang makikita dito. Okay? And then imamap niya na lang dun sa full name natin. Lahat nung nandun sa form natin, eto siya. I-click lang natin yung arrow na to, yung triangle. Yung full name, yung email address, and yung institution, lahat yan ay nasa webinar series natin. Full name. Email address, institution. Okay? So, nandito siya. Ano lang yung kailangan natin for our certificate? Ang kailangan lang natin is yung full name lang ng ating participants. So, full name lang yung ating ilalagay dun sa ating AutoCAD. Okay? Then, click next. Okay, ano yung ating magandang pangalan? Okay, dahil let's say thousands na yung magiging participants nyo, mas maganda siguro kung yung file name niya, yung pangalan, Name po, ano yung in-input niya, and then lagay natin dito, certificate. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, pag nag-input ako sa form ng Lilibet Antonio, ano yung magiging file name ng certificate ko? Lilibet Antonio certificate. Okay. So, types natin ay PDF. Okay. Multiple output tayo, ha, kasi madami yun. Mga thousands ng participants natin. Then, click next. Sa so, my drive ko ba siya isa save? Save ko siya sa certificate natin para naka-organize. I'm sorry. Cancel. Certificate. And then, select. Ito, hindi naman natin to kailangan, so move na lang natin to. Certificate lang. Then, click next. Lahat ng mga optional sa AutoCAD, next na lang natin, no? So, hindi naman natin siya kailangan. Oh, ito, magandang question to. Gusto mo bang i-share yung documents natin and send sa email? Yes, kasi nag-aabang tayo ng certificate sa email, di ba? So, click natin yung yes as PDF. Collaborator, no? Magre-reply pa ba, no? And then, itong part na to, ito yung message na lilitaw dun sa send natin na email address. Example, ang, kung ano yung email address na in-enter niya. So, click mo lang email address and then paste. Yan. Para masend dun sa email address niya ng ating participant. No? No? Reply to no? O ano yung subject natin? Ang gusto kong subject, lilito yung pangalan ng certificate ng participant. Ay, sorry. Full name. Ulit natin. So, full name natin. Paste. And then, lagyan natin dito ng certificate. O ano yung message natin? Let's say, congratulations. Para intense. Congratulations. Kung sino yung sino yung gusto mong i-congratulate, oh, full name ulit. Bakit? Para lilito dito yung pangalan ng participant. Yan. Tapos, you can now download your certificate here. Right? And then click next. Okay, what is run from form, form trigger? Ibig sabihin, pag nag-click ka dyan ng yes, every time na may mag a add na respondents or magsasagot na respondents, si Autocrat automatic nag-generate ng certificate. Okay. So, yun yun. Eto, magsaset ka ng particular time. So, wag na lang siya. No na lang siya. And then, click save. Okay. So, let's now try to run our certificate. Wait lang tayo. Medyo matagal lang siya ng konti. Pero since dalawa lang naman yung in-input natin, makikita naman niya dito, two rows will be merged. Wait lang. Yan. Yan. So, cleaning up. Okay na. So, as you can see, nagkaroon tayo ng successful notice dito. So, we have here merged na tayo. 
nag nagalu pala si Sir Edinel dito. So meron pala tayong isang nag-participate. Yan. So nagkaroon tayo ng certificate automatic. Okay, let's see. Tingnan natin na punta tayo sa ating drive na certificate. Yan. So makikita nyo siya pag clinic ko si Lilibet Antonio kasi ako yung nag input kanina. Si, meron na akong automatic certificate. Lilibet G. Antonio. Okay? Okay. Paano naman? Uy, meron tayong guest dito si Sir Edinel Valentino. Nagkaroon siya ng certificate. So when I click this one, Edinel Valentino. So whatever name yung in-input ni user dun sa form natin, automatic yun. Magkikreate tayo ng certificate. Bakit? Kasi congruent tayo. We have full name here and then kung ano yung full name na nilagay nila dito. Okay, paano, gaano ka real-time si AutoCAD? When we try to input another one, tingnan natin kung mag-generate siya ng another certificate. Uh, let's say si Ma'am Lorraine. Ma'am Lorraine Tolentino. Wala pala ako email ad ni Ma'am Lorraine. So, sample muna. Gmail.com. At then, institution niya ay Bulacan State University. Oops, University. And then click submit. Okay, so let's look now at our webinar. So automatic dito si Ma'am Lorraine, naka-insert na. And then wait lang tayo ng konting time. Lilito din dito yan. Medyo mabagal lang ng konti yung pag-generate niya ng certificate. Yan. So automatic siya. Few seconds lang naman. Meron na agad tayong certificate for Ma'am Lorraine. Then when you look at the drive, so we have here Lorraine Tolentino, that PTF. And then when you click, Yon, so meron ng certificate si Ma'am Lorraine Tolentino. Ngayon pa. Wrong, wrong spelling na certificate. All right, so let's try. Ay, tingnan muna natin kung ma-send sa ating drive. Ay sa ating email address kasi ito yung aabangan ng mga laging kumaattend ng mga seminar eh. Tama ba ako, Ma'am? So let's say punta tayo sa Gmail. Uh, gmail.com na Gmail. Mail. Yan, so makikita nyo, kung ano yung in-input kong pangalan, yun yung magiging subject ng ating email. So, Lilibet Antonio, eto siya. And then when I click, yan, so congratulations, Lilibet Antonio, kasi ito yung input kong name, certificate, congratulations. And then now the participants can download the certificate. Click nyo lang yung download. Diba? So, ganun lang kadali si Autocrat. Ngayon, bakit ako merong another... Ay, sorry, na-close ko si email. Okay, anyway, kung valid yung email address mo, lahat yon ay masasend to your email address. And then, meron din akong copy to my drive. Okay, ba tayo doon sa certificate? Okay, what if mali daw yung pangalan? Sige, let's try to input. By the way, ito yung summary of our responses. Okay, take note guys, ha, nasa participants yon kung mali yung pangalan sa certificate niya or Ma or tama. For example, bilang caps lang. O, libet. Pero libet yung pangalan ko. Ito lang yung gusto ko. Bet lang. Then email. Ay, naku, madadoble yung email. Sorry, gawa nyo. Email.com Let's see. Bulacan State University. Click Submit. Go to your, yan, so automatic siya. Bet lang yung nilagay ko, ah, na name. Hindi siya full name. So, mga seconds lang yan. Magdagawa na agad si AutoCAD. Yan. So, when I click, actually, pwede ko siyang makita. Ay, so, Lorraine niya. Lorraine pala yung naklik ko. Okay. So, when I click this one, Okay. So, bet lang. Yan. Kaya huwag kayong maninisi kapag mali-mali pangalan sa uh, name nung pangalan nyo. Kasi kung ano yung input nyo sa form, yun yung lilitaw with our certificate. Okay? So, clear yun? Alright. So, etong webinar na to, may e-certificate tayo. So, just wait lang tayo ng konti para mag-answer ng evaluation form. Then, automatic mag-send si ang um, ating sponsor ng mga different certificates. Alright? Okay ba tayo doon, guys, sa certificate? Actually, hindi lang sa slide siya pwede. May time pa ba ako mo? 
Actually, hindi lang sa slide siya pwede. Pinakita kasi natin is we link the autocrat to slide. Pero actually, pwede siya multiple ang ko-call natin na fields. Okay, for example, let's have another example. Close ko ulit pa, guys. Okay, so ito na nga pala yung ating collection of certificates. Last. So for another one. Ito good to dun sa mga high school na magpap or elementary na magpapadala ng kanilang mga awardees sa parents para hindi ka na enter or input ka ng input. Uh, let's say awards. Sample to guys. So click ulit natin to awards. And then uh, let's say short answer lang tayo. Uh, full name ng bat. Full name ng ating awardee. Then we have here, ito yung kanyang awards. Uh, checkbox, kasi baka madaming award yung bata. Let's say, with high honors. With, ay, with highest malanguna. And ito pinaka the best among the rest. So, with highest honor. With high honors. And then we have with honors. Okay, and pa ba yung mga bibigay nyo? Let's say best in math. Uh, best in computer, last na ta. And then we have now best, oh sorry, best in English. Okay, so yan lang muna para medyo madalita. Required natin siya. Required. And then full name is also required. Ay, sorry, we forgot email address ng parents, no? Kasi doon natin isi-send yung letter natin. So email address. And then okay, short answer lang. Then required. And then, of course, syempre, laging maganda kasi sa parents natin siya ipapadala. Sample lang to. Insert. Choose. Okay. So, meron na tayo. Tandaan natin yung mga fields natin. Ha? We have full name, email address, and the award. So, now, go to your Google Drive. Let's create. Now, this time, let's use Docs. Kasi kanina, ginamit natin ay slide. Ito, madali lang ito. Yung documents naman, para ka lang nagma-Microsoft Word. Uh, let's say, Dear Parents. So, lagyan natin dito ng congratulations. Ito. Let's say, we are pleased to inform you that your child. Okay. So, ano yung kukunin natin dito ang tag? Okay. Yung full name. Remember, kung ano man yung magiging full name ng ating bata. Okay. Uh -huh. We'll be receiving an award. Kung isa lang, awards. Oops. Take note, dalawa na yung gagawin natin dito. Ah. So, we have here now the Award. With S ba o walang S? So, let's try to check. With S kasi award siya. Award. So, dito, awards din. Click. Right? So, please join us at, let's say, Bulsu Valencia Hall at, uh, let's say, June, ay, tapos na. Let's say, July 1, 20. Yun na lang, hope. Ay, on pala, sorry. On. Kaya pala tinatama na. So, hope to see you there. Okay, what we're trying to see here is yung paggamit ng Google Docs at at the same time, pagko-call nung dalawang fields natin. We have full name and then the awards. Dito, we can easily uh, edit everything. Uh, let's say, say, congratulation. Center. Medyo gandahan natin ng konti. Make it 18. And then, lobster. Yan, congratulation. 
For the full name, lagyan lang natin to ng bold. Lakihan lang ng konti. Gusto nyo uh, underline natin para makita agad yung pangalan ng bata. And then, syempre, yung kanyang awards. We have your bold. And then, 14. Ah, gusto natin, naka-italic. Italic natin yung awards niya. Okay? So, let's see. Ang output dito, supposedly, kapag nag-input si teacher ng full name ng ating awardee, mapupunta dito, and all awards will be put here. Kaya lang, tandaan natin na tama dapat si full name. Let's double check. Okay, full name check. Awards. Let's see. Okay, awards. So, tama siya. Okay, so let's now look. Okay, full name. O, ako na lang ulit. Okay, Lilibet G. Antonio. Bet that Antonio24 at gmail.com gmail.com Ayan, ito na. So, syempre ako yung pinakamatalino. So, with highest honor, best in math, best in computer, and then best in English. Napakadami kong awards. Then, submit it. Okay, we're done. O, ano nang next ulit natin? We will now create spreadsheet. So, create. Ayan, dami kong awards. Ayaw mag-load. Oops. Ayan. So, go get to add-ons. Okay na tayo kay Autocrat. Click Autocrat. Launch. Ayan. So, mag-mag-mag. Ano siya? Ayan. So, new job tayo. Okay. Deem natin dito. Let's say awards. Oh, next. Pwede na na natin. Oops. From Drive. Wala na namang pangalan yung ating document. So, lagyan natin siya ng name. Nakalimutan kong maglagay ng name. Dear parents. Okay. Uh, cancel ko lang. From drive. Ayan. Dear parents, select. Then wait. And then next. Yan. So, makita nyo dalawa na dito. Ah. We have full name and we have the awards. Bakit? Kasi yung ating link dito na-identify agad niya that we have the full name and we have the awards here. O, so, nag-automatic naman siya. And then, click next. File name natin, yung pangalan ng bata. And then, let's say, awards niya. Okay. Uh, Google Docs na lang natin siya makita para makita niyo yung tsura kapag Google Docs. And then, we have your next. Choose folder. Doon natin lagi sa certificate para mas madaling makita later. And then, itong drive natin ay delete na lang natin. Certificates. Then, click next, next, next. Share doc, yes. Pero this time, kapag document siya, meron tayong nakalagay dito na view only. Kasi baka damihan ng bata yung awards niya. No? So, dagagay dito view only na lang. Parang hindi siya editable. So, no. And then, email add. Kung kangino mo ipapadala. Let's say, email add to ng parents. Paste. Then, lagyan natin dito ng congratulations. Congratulations. Wala na. Dito ay full name. Kunin na lang natin dito para mas madali. Full name. Paste. And then uh, awards. So, congratulations. Uh, yun na lang para madali. Then, next. So, trigger natin ulit. And then, save. Yan. Tingnan natin what will be the output. O, saving job awards. And then, let's try to run na our autocrat. O, one rows will be merged. And then, close. Okay. So, eto na siya. Kung makikita natin, meron na tayong Google Docs here. So, when you double-click it, Automatic nang malalagay si full name ko. Congratulations, Lilibet G. Antonio. And all my rewards are here. Awards are here. So with highest honor ako, best in math, best in computer, and best in English. So ganun katulan gumawa dito. And all you have to do is to, you can print this one, or you can share dun sa parents, or you can check your email address nung parents para makita natin lahat. And then lahat yan ay nakasave sa ating Google Drive. 
na may folder na certificates. Here, so we have the Lipet Antonio Award. And when I double click this one, yan, so meron akong congratulations, nakamerge siya. So Autocrat is nag-work siya sa slide or sa Google Docs. Pwede pa ba ma'am? Okay, so okay na tayo sa Autocrat. Okay, this will be siguro mga two add-ons na lang and then we're done. Okay na? Certificates, done? So, ganun lang kadaling gumawa. How about form limiter add-ons? Ito, marami nagtatanong ito, what if ang gusto ko lang respondents ay 100? Okay, pero since nakapost siya sa FB, thousands yung magre-register. Pero ang gusto ko lang is 100. You can now choose or use the form limiter add-ons. Okay, so saan makikita si form limiters? Si form limiters ay nasa... Okay, so when you click this one, sisimplihan na lang natin. Uh, let's say survey. Survey lang. Click. Uh, name mo na pala, sorry. Uh, name lang. So short answer. Click lang. Ito, konting survey lang. For example, which one do you do you prefer? Is it face-to-face? Face-to-face classes or online learning? At ang gusto mo dito, let's say 100 lang yung gusto nating mag-answer. Yun yung job deform limiter. Okay. So, since hindi naman tayo magde-demo ng 100, makabutin tayo ng alas 5. Okay. So, we will just simply select mga 5 respondents na. Okay. Then, make it record. Choose one. We have choose. Uh, insert. Okay. So, this is how it looks like. Simple survey lang. Name lang, tsaka tatanungin nyo lang kung ano yung gusto nila. Kung face-to-face -face ba or online learning. Ngayon, ang gusto lang na ang kaibahan lang nito, make it 10 lang yung gusto nating mag-answer. Kasi usually, dito, in, uh, kiniklik natin yung, kapag ayaw na nating mag-respond, di ba, ikiklik lang natin siya. Pero dito, may automatic na using the add-ons. So, click lang yung add-ons. We have form limiter. Kung wala pa, saan siya makikita? Punta lang kayo sa three dots and then add-ons. Yan. So, si, hanapin lang natin dito si form limiter here. And then, kung wala pang naka-install, i-install lang natin. Since, since meron na ako, I've here na form limiter. Click. Okay. Ito nga pala, medyo matagal nga pala siyang mag -load. So, we'll wait lang natin si form limiter. So, usually, try din ako nito, nakakailang... Uh, uh, labas siya pero hindi siya naglo-launch. So, sa try lang ulit natin. Click natin yung help. Okay. Normal lang si form limiter. Na-experience ko din siya na matagal talaga siyang mag-launch. Ayaw na niyang mag-launch. Okay. So, wala pa rin. Let's try to refresh. Sana mag-launch na siya. Ayun. Okay. So, okay lang yan na na-encounter talaga natin yung error na yun. You'll try to refresh lang and then dito din naman yung ating agenda dito na set limit. So, nakalagay dito limit type, number of response. So, ilan lang yung gusto kong response? Gusto ko ay 5 lang para ma-demo natin. So, kung 5 dito, lalagay natin dito ay 4. Kasi nakalagay dito, stop accepting from risk when greater than the number. So, kung 4, ibig sabihin, sa 5, mag-stop na siyang mag-accept ng uh, respondents. And then, you can edit the message here. For example, ayoko ng close by Beth Antonio. Lagay natin dito, close by the administrator. Right? Then, save and enable. Then, nakalagay na dito is save. So, when you run, Let's try kung maglalagay. Oh, let's say bet. Face-to-face -face ang gusto ko. Submit. So we have one. 
but get another response. Uh, let's say, Nika, gusto ko rin face-to-face, -face, submit to, but get another response. Uh, let's say, uh, si EJ, ang gusto naman niya ay online learning, submit. So, three, submit another response. Aha, si Adi, online learning. Ina na, four, submit, ay, submit another response. Face to face, submit another response. So five na tayo. Ayan. So magkakaroon na dito ng message. This form is no longer accepting responses and has been set to automatically close by the administrator. Okay. So yun yung maganda kay form limiter. You can edit. Ah, uh, you can select yung number of participants na gusto lang nating mag-answer ng ating survey. Okay. Okay. Aside kay kay form limiter. Meron din siyang date and time. Eh. So you can also try to practice kung paano naman mag-set mag up ng this one, date. Okay, for example, gusto niyong mag-stop lahat ng responses niyo. Ng, naka open lang yung inyong form ng hanggang June 19, 3 p.m. So possible din siya using the date and time. Right? So ito yung pinaka Again, ano yung mga add-ons sa pwede natin gamitin? Autocrat for certificates, slides or docs, and we have here the form limiter. And the last one will be, last na tong add-ons kasi gusto natin magpasikat ng konti with the, our respondents is by using the QR code generator. Bibigyan kayo ni forms ng, uh, what's this? Uh, pwedeng link or pwedeng QR code. Remember yung mga millennials natin and generation, generation Z, Diba gusto nila mga QR code na yung ginagamit? Okay, kaya lang yung QR code generator, may bayad siya. Only 15 credits lang yung pwede natin gamitin. Pero if you like, pwede rin naman, sayang din naman yung 15. So grab na natin. Eto, instead of links, usually nagpupot kayo ng links, ang gagamitin nyo naman ay QR code. So it's same form na lang tayo. We have the QR code generator. Okay, English. Okay, so ito yung ating QR code. Automatic na siya ha. Basta nirun natin siya, mag-generate agad siya ng QR code. Pwede mong i-maximize yung size niya, yung font niya, yung color niya, and then background. Pero for the meantime, as is na lang muna natin gagamitin si QR code. And then all you have to do is just to copy to clipboard. Ayan, so copied na siya. Ipipaste na lang natin siya sa ating... So, natin siya ipipaste. Gawa tayo. Sample lang po. Ipipaste ko siya sa aking docs. Oops. Ayaw mag-load. New. And docs. Last na to. Wala pala ako internet mo. Yan. So, when you click this one, instead of links, ang ipapadala natin sa mga sudyante natin ay itong ating QR code. Itong ating QR code. Yan. So, if you have now, hindihan lang yung ating screen. So, ang gagawin lang dito, if you have cellphone camera na pwedeng i-click lang natin to or isha shot and then automatic ka nang magpupunta with other dun sa ating form. Okay, for example. Okay, for example. Nakakonect na ito sa akin. Okay, so gagawin lang natin is instead of link QR tayo. So pag tinapat natin siya with our camera, click. Ayan, then automatic na tayong magpupunta with our survey kanina. Ito siya. Okay? Tapos na nga pala yun, kaya ito yung lumitaw with other. Pero ganun lang yung kanyang logic. When you click the... When you try to scan, yan. Ulit. And then automatic na siyang magpo-post or dun magpupunta sa ating document window. Yan. So that is for the... Kung medyo social ka lang naman, why not try to use QR code instead 
of links. Alright, so yun yung mga add-ons na pwede natin gamitin for our uh, Google Form. Again, Autocrat. We have the form limiter and the uh, QR code generators. Right? So, uh, so hope you learned something today about Google Forms and how to create certificates. So by the way, uh, I am Lilibet G. Antonio. You can contact me at beth.antonio24 at gmail.com or lilibet.antonio at bulso.edu.ph. Alright, so thank you very much. And hope to see you tomorrow dun sa ating day two of our Google G Suite Educator for Education. Si Sir Ira naman yun, he will be discussing to you Google Classroom, Drive, and Google Mail. Right? So thank you very much for listening.